The trip to Paris started at the lake since it is only 30 minutes from the airport of Verona. Upon arriving, the hotel room was not ready yet, so we went to pick up some McDonald's and looked for a nice place to sit nearby. And there it was, all at once the Eiffel Tower was right in front of us. It was generally not as full as we expected it to be around Paris' main attraction. Our hotel had a very cozy roof terrace, which was actually always empty. The goal for the first evening was to go to the Eiffel Tower. We accessed it at 10 p.m., but as you can see, it was still very bright outside. There are three floors that visitors can access. The first one has a restaurant and a bar. The second one is the one on which I was in that exact moment and it has some shops. And the third floor is at the very top. But unfortunately, we were not able to access it since in case of an emergency, they do not have an escape plan for people in a wheelchair. Since I was not able to go to the top, I got a Slurpee and I managed to get the last pink one. Pink sunset with a pink Slurpee. What else do you need? As I mentioned, this is the first floor with a bar and restaurant. Upon leaving, the Eiffel Tower started sparkling like crazy. And this is such an amazing view. On day two, we went to Versailles. As smart as we were, we decided to visit the building itself in the morning and the hot gardens during lunchtime and the afternoon. There were over 40 degrees Celsius such that we were constantly just looking for cool shady places like this path that went through the woods. Due to the heat, many places in the gardens were just deserted, not a soul around. Less people meant it was generally very peaceful. Even though it was so hot, we still tried to make the best out of it and to visit every corner of the gardens of Versailles. We ended up being at the opposite side of the estate and thus we took the train to go back to the main building, which turned out to be the best choice of the day. On day three, we went to the Museum of Revolution, which contained a huge number of distinct species and how they evolved over time. The ceiling changed color and went through a day and night cycle, including thunderstorms and a rainbow, which was pretty cool. One part of the museum was dedicated to recently extinct species and visitors were able to see these animals with special VR glasses. When traveling from one place to another, we always use taxis. They are not that expensive in Paris and with the heat we experienced, it was the only good choice one could take. It was also very nice seeing some of these amazing and, I guess, typical buildings of the city. These buildings are situated right next to the Seine River, on the fancier side of the city. And around every corner there are people selling magazines. Back in 2019, the roof of the Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire and burned for about 15 hours. Here we see some doves that were trying to cool down in a dirty puddle. They are still renovating the cathedral to this day and during the whole trip it was definitely the place where we saw most people at once. On day 4 we went to the gallery of paleontology. This was by far the most inaccessible place I've ever been to and the employees were not helping at all. Still, I managed to see dinosaurs and I really liked the overall design of the museum. Unfortunately, all the descriptions were in French. Since it was the last day, we decided to do a little sightseeing tour on the Seine River. As you can see, we started right from Notre Dame, which is situated not far from the Museum of Paleontology. Our goal was to get back to the Eiffel Tower and our hotel, which is nearby, and thus to skip one trip in the taxi. The river was full of different boats. Some were some sort of taxi boats that went in circles all day long, bringing people from one place to another. Other boats were sightseeing boats with nice views and some sort of guide talking about the city. Other ones were bar boats where you had drinks, like just a normal bar. <laughs> and on some, people were even able to dine which must be so romantic in the city of love. Here you can see a boat on which people had lunch or dinner. It's just like a floating restaurant. One negative side of Paris was that there are many homeless people. 
They just slept wherever they were, even right next to the river where hundreds of people pass by on a daily basis. I personally did not expect for poverty to be so evident in such a city. Once again the Eiffel Tower, our goal. Upon leaving the boat there were a few steps and since I was in the wheelchair and random people were never really helpful, it surprised me that one guy left the boat, then saw us and came right back to give us a hand. What better way to finish the trip than relaxing on the rooftop? Thank you for watching. <laughs>